Ay, mija, abuelita San Hawaii, and I still need to shop for the party. No worries. Let's order through Instacart. ¿Insta qué? Sí, llama. We can order groceries and more online and get everything delivered in as fast as an hour. ¿Everything for dinner? Carne, tortillas, limas, plátanos. Claro. ¿Anything else? Just make sure the plátanos are ripe. Get groceries delivered same day with Instacart so you have more time for family. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Percolate on a particular mix of odd and inspiring news headlines in Wendy's Coffee House. Newsmakers with a pin shot for the unknown, unexplained, and unusual share their experiences with UFOs, ghost encounters, near death experiences, and more for your own unique blend of Wendy's Coffee House Curious. And now, Here's Wendy. I tell you, the news just keeps happening. All sorts of stuff all over the world. Um, as a former news person for, you know, a minute, uh, this, this is like overload, overwhelm. So we're just going to include a few news tidbits. My guest is also a dream interpreter and J.M. DeBoard. I also call him Jason. He's going to be online. He's, he's, he's already online listening right now. And But I want to throw out these headlines because there's just so much out there. First, uh, Linda Moulton Howe. She had a great article on the coronavirus, kind of keeping up with that. And what she included, I thought was really pretty fascinating, is that the doctor, one of the head doctors, and this is a guy, the quote, I consider myself a veteran in battles such as bird flu, SARS, and other outbreaks, but with this Wuhan pneumonia, I feel extremely powerless. Okay, when you're hearing from a guy who is an expert on this stuff, says we might not have figured out how far this thing can go. So keep your, uh, just keep your ears peeled and pay attention to what, what's going on with this, okay, because it might, uh, might have a little bit more of an impact than we have yet to figure out. thought that was fascinating. There's another thing, too, that apparently they found the Titanic again. <laughs> this is from The Guardian. It's exclusive. The wreck of the Titanic was hit by a submarine last year, but the U.S. government kept it quiet. That's what somebody said in court, okay. $35 million dollar underwater vehicle british company hired it they said it's like the first time in 15 years they made the trip apparently it was really successful so to speak they found it (laughs) and that this is a what it is is this um vehicle is a titan submarine and so it's a it's a really uh, is it triton Uh, let me let me get this a a triton i'm sorry yeah not titan football triton submersible and they collided because it was intense and highly unpredictable currents. So th- that was it. And I, the rest of this is going to play out. But I just that was one of the headlines. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it, it hit. And they kept it quiet. Now, um, there are some other things that are going on. They still don't know who the drone operators are, that mystery drone thing going on out in Colorado. That are, they're like six feet around, and they, they start at 7 o'clock at night and run until about 10 o'clock. And these are, you can't miss this kind of drone. Well, the, at this point, they say the local law enforcement has decided to kind of back off, which means we know, but we can't say. <laughs> they know, but they can't say. So, and then they were also said, don't shoot them down. That's really not a good idea. So that would say if somebody did do something like that, then they would quickly decide that somebody knows about it and they're not happy. <laughs> and, and we might hear more. The other, th- this is a great headline. This is the, I, this is where people actually respect the little folks. All right, and this happens to be the land of fairies. A Scottish fish farm was rejected because they were warned that the fishermen could be lured to their deaths by fairies. And that is, this is from the Scotsman and the folklore. They said that the, in this area, this is, this is um, centuries. This is something that could impact the tourist industry if they have an altercation and a run-in with the others who live here. And I can't even, Eileen Flogadara fairies. Okay, I'm butchering that thing. So just Google. <laughs> and, and then you can say it. But what happened was that um, a sea fairy is like a mermaid, and they've lived off the coast of the Isle of Sky, of the coast of Sky for a thousand years. So they are drawn to the surface once a century, and they're going to bathe in the moonlight. What happened, they said, if the cages that are around here if they do the fish farm, they might frighten the fairies. And if they got frightened and possibly harmed, then they would not think kindly 
about those who harm them. Thus, the farmers could be taken under the surface, and that's not good. <laughs> they would stay there. But what, what happened was yeah, they protested, and they said, okay, that's, you're right. We don't want to mess with this. Um, and they, there's actually a whole a story about um, using, there's a, a flag that they used that, that gave them luck during wars, and that flag is a part of this fairy lore. And so there's a lot more that goes behind. I just, it's like an hour to explain the whole thing. Anyway, no fish farm. Got it? There you go. That was my highlight. <laughs> this, this is why I love the news background, because I'm constantly seeing things like this. And they never make, you know, it's like these are tiny headlines. But they're the best part. They're the best part of the news. It's like, oh, please. Well, that and the Wienermobile. They got derailed. This, and this is funny. When you learn about the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile and what it takes, right now I think they're still looking for students because they, they um, do a little trial run every year and they, they hire or find students to, to drive it. And in Wisconsin it got pulled over because it was not obeying the laws. Okay, you're driving a monster unit that you've been trained to drive, but somehow you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You're going to get pulled over because they can't miss you. And so that was, that was another, another little cute story. Then you find out how many weeks it takes to learn how to drive that big honking machine and uh, okay <laughs> there you go what they got was a fantastic PSA for safe driving yay traffic okay Jason <laughs> have I given uh, you a good lead in hi Wendy <laughs> <laughs> from all right from uh, Wienermobiles uh, pandemic viruses and now we go to dreams how's uh, okay. how's that for a segue you forgot the fairies in the Titanic I mean you know it was the, the kitchen fairies, sink <laughs> It's, you know, Wendy, it, it sounds like one of those bizarre dreams you wake up from and you go, what in the world was that? And then you just kind of forget about it and go on with your day. Yeah, yeah. But that's the fun stuff. Right now I'm on the screen watching a train as a little pony's going across a railroad track bridge. See, this is media. Media is absolutely a, 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 a plethora of opportunities to run amok and have really cool dream encounters. OK, so this the best stuff is happening right now. And we think we're awake. But OK, so. When people, it's probably a deer instead of a pony, but back to, <laughs> back to you. I forgot the drones. Um, what, with all the stuff that's happening right now, have you noticed, because you do the dream inter interpretation for Reddit, you're, you're the moderator there. Have you noticed people having different, strange, more outrageous, unusual dreams? You will see these headlines get incorporated sometimes into the stories that the dreams are telling to people, you know, I'm at Reddit Dreams, R-E-D-D-I-T. Um, so go to Reddit uh, or dreams.reddit.com. Mm -hmm. It's the largest community for dream sharing um, in the world on the Internet. And so I see all these reports. I People talk about come there to share and talk about their dreams. So I see a lot of this. And what you will see is when you've got something that is big in the headlines, you will see the way that people's dreams will absorb or their minds absorb this stuff. And then their dreams translate it into story and symbolism. So, so let's say something like um, uh, a crazy virus, uh, you know, and the news is spreading everywhere could be like shown as um, a plague of locusts. Uh, uh, it could be shown as like a tidal wave or a tsunami or something like that. It's mm -hmm. the dreaming mind's way of taking these ideas and translating them. Like with a tsunami, there's sort of a, a dread that comes with it. It's something that comes on slowly. And we're kind of getting this drip of news that's coming out about this stuff. And there's the panic bells that are being rung really hard about this. So that's what you end up seeing more is people's emotional reactions to these things. That's what you end up seeing in their dreams, more so than, say, like a, a factual account or a news report about what's going on. A news report in the sense of just like the dreaming mind is taking what you absorbed during the day and, and spitting it back at you one for one. Instead, it's going to take it and translate it into story and symbolism and find the way that it is personally resonating with you. I've got one for that. And this is, I really, I had, I had forgotten about it, but you said tsunami. I think, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, yeah, from 2005. And it was the day, I think it was a Christmas day or the day after Christmas, um, Boxing Day. It was um, one of those dreams where I, I seemed to have an apartment that was on right on the, the ocean deck, almost like a where you go out to a waterway and you, you can step out into the yeah. waterway to your boat. Okay, the apartment's there, and I have a cat carrier, an animal carrier right there so the cat can be outside and enjoy the weather. And I mm. see 
these clouds, this ominous cloud cover coming in, and 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 I hear the Jaws theme, and I'm like, oh no, what the heck? And I know I've got to get the cat off the porch. I've got to get the cat off the porch. Well, I woke up the day of the headlines of the tsunami. But I thought, how bizarre that my dream, I didn't know what was happening, but somehow plugged into that, you know, consensus reality. Somewhere along the line, I got, um, I was clued in. And But that was the Jaws theme. I thought, wow, that's really interesting. I put that in there, too. I saved the cat. <laughs> 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 you, you're Ripley from uh, from Aliens. You, you're going to go back and save the cat, you know, because yeah. that's important too. You know, Wendy. People, uh, we are part of something. When we dream, we plug into a sort of a, a, a grid or information network that allows us to receive and send information that is outside of the conventional senses. You know, you didn't, how do you know that a tsunami is about to happen, Mm -hmm. you know? And, of course, it's going to translate it symbolically for you. But, for example, there were a lot of people before. Hold on, hold on. We've got to take a break. We've got to take a break. But we'll come back into that, uh, going out, how to translate the symbols. Okay, so my guest, Jason DeBoard, J.M. DeBoard, who is the dream interpreter, uh, interpreter. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was just kind of going with it. Uh, go with interpreter. <laughs> yeah, I'll well, that's that. true. The Dream Interpretation Dictionary, Symbols, Signs, and Meanings. Back in a few when I work on my language. Okay, KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. My guest, J.M. DeBoard, Jason. I'm having a fairy flashback, or maybe it's a drone flashback. What, they're on the Titanic, and they're worried because there's a virus it's going to break out any moment now. They know. They've had this premoni- premonition that it's happening. Okay. All right. You, can you work with that one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully hopefully it's a lot like the SARS virus, which <laughs> turned out to be a whole lot of nothing. Uh. But, you know, people don't find that out until years after the fact when they go, oh, all those cases of the flu, people were just sick with other things. There wasn't actually any virus. It was just a whole lot of uh, hype and a whole lot of hot air just to make people afraid. So and bacteria. I will ask everyone to hold off on, yeah, there's other causes for these things. They, they talk about these flus that come out, and they call it the flu, but it's just a collection of symptoms that they label that way. So I will just ask everyone out there that before anybody gets into a panic about this thing to allow this story to really unfold, because after the fact, you end up finding out that – there wasn't really anything, kind of like the Zika thing. You know, in the end, there it wasn't anything to be worried about. But, you know, that won't stop them from You have it to up. have headlines. And something new and something novel is headline. And novelty leads. Okay, so that's part of it. It's like, okay, get it out first and go back and see what you can find out later. And that's, uh, you know, that's part of On the dream scene, when you were talking about figuring out symbols, that first symbol can be frightening. Like when I heard the Jaws theme, but I yeah. had no clue how to read or interpret the symbol. I just knew the water, there was a dark cloud, and the water was dark and kind of rumbling, and there was this Jaws theme, and I knew I had to get the cat. Well, I knew it was a warning. I knew that part, and and, the, and I don't have a cat on a deck near the near the water, unfortunately. I, I mean, you know, that would be a cool lifestyle, but no. And that was a way of giving me a, a piece of information with short snippets. How do you work with those? Well, the first thing to realize is that the dreaming mind is a translator, and it is receiving input while you are asleep and you're dreaming. You're dreaming. Your dreaming mind is receiving this input, and it's translating it into symbolic imagery, or think of it as a visual metaphor. So when you are inputting this information, in your case, Wendy, you're there, you're you're sensitive to these things to begin with. So you're going to get maybe a little more information than the average dreamer about these events that are going on in the world. But what you're feeling is a lot of it is the emotional resonance of it. Mm -hmm. So look at how the dreaming mind takes that input, that information that's coming into you, and it turns it into a metaphor. I mean, the Jaws theme, that Mm -hmm. is... It, that gives the emotional resonance a sense of dread or, or that right. ominous feeling. You mix it together with the visual imagery of the clouds rolling in and the ocean looking, sus, you know, suspect. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you've got something there to save the cat, you know. So there is a that's the way that the dreaming mind works. And this information can come from the body. 
You know, if you eat something that's disturbing your digestion and you go to bed, then your dreaming mind is going to take that. You know, that hamburger that isn't sitting well could be turned into a cow that is attacking you in your dream because your dreaming mind is aware of what your body is telling it and the fact that it's that bad hamburger that you ate that's actually causing the disturbance. Mm -hmm. It can also be things that are in your emotions. It can be things that you've thought about during the day. It can be memories that you're processing. But then there is another layer to dreaming that opens you up to this larger collective consciousness that allows you to receive information that you shouldn't really be able to know conventionally, but somehow you're getting this information. Like the guy who dreamed about, uh, he came to Reddit and he showed a screenshot of his diary that he kept his dream journal that he talked about a helicopter crash outside of a sports venue and it's going up a mountain in the fog and the, the helicopter crashes. And he didn't hear Kobe Bryant in his mind when he was dreaming, but as soon as he saw that headline, two weeks later, this was two weeks before that event, mm -hmm. he dreamed about it. He wrote it down and detailed it, and then he um, then it actually happened. And as soon as he heard about the headline about Kobe dying in a helicopter crash, he knew that that's what he dreamed about ahead of time. And this happens to people all over the world every morning. They're waking up with this information in their minds about things that are going to happen. And it can be as mundane as what a friend is going to say during a conversation or the random person they're going to bump into in the street, all the way through things like Kobe's accident, um, the 9-11 uh, attacks. There were mm -hmm. a lot of people who dreamed about that ahead of time. So sometimes you, you, know, you get this information into your dreaming mind, and it's taking it and it's translating it into symbolic imagery. Very rarely is it going to be something that is – like a memory, like it's literal. But in the case of the guy who dreamed about um, Kobe, he said that he experienced it like remembering something and that the scene was very, very vivid. But the kid who was in um, New Jersey who reported dreaming about the 9-11 attacks dreamed about it as kicking a soccer ball between two goalposts. That's very symbolic. So it's hard to tell as you sort through this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell what is just a symbolic image and what is, you know, and it's very personal to you right. and what is co connected into this collective consciousness. And you're actually receiving information that um, about what is going on in the world, but you're receiving it through your dreaming mind. So it's really, it, it's fascinating, Wendy, but you, you, you just, you understand the dreaming mind is a translator. It turns all the input received into symbolic imagery if you can start with that simple fact, it can take you really far into understanding your dreams. In order to work better with my dreams, I had to shut down earlier in the evening with whatever content, whether it was television, books, or, you know, that kind of stuff. I had to switch gears to give myself space. Otherwise, it went immediately into the dream plane. Yeah, um, and I like to transition also into sleep to allow myself some time to, especially emotionally, to um, center myself and calm down and just sort of let the day drain away from me before I go into the dream state. You know, I had someone come to Reddit the other day who was having um, uh, vivid and disturbing nightmares. And after we looked at the content of the nightmares, there was a lot of them like uh, being chased by some dark shadowy thing. Um, he had another dream about seeing this boy who was beside his parents' bed and he's upside down and bleeding and all this stuff. And it's very dramatic imagery. And what I pointed out to him was that your dreaming mind is going to process your emotions for you if you don't do it for yourself. I mean, it's going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you are having disturbing dreams, the first thing you really want to do is get yourself in as calm of a state as you can before you go to sleep. Because the dreaming mind does not have the same filters as we do, you know, the conscious mind does. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it serves it to you raw and hot. So if you go to bed with a lot on your mind, if you go to bed with a lot of unprocessed, you know, emotions, mm -hmm. um, thoughts that haven't been digested, then you are inviting disturbing dreams or at least powerful dreams because they're going to do the processing for you. So really, Wendy, the best thing you can do is allow yourself some time to transition um, to sleep. Mm -hmm. Instead of just going from, you know, 100 miles an hour in your day to zero and in bed and dreaming. 
I want to take a break here real quick. we got to do the news, but I want to come back and kind of switch gears into when you dream about people who are famous or um, not just famous, sometimes they're important to you in a way that they're either very significant but also deceased and what that might mean and how to interpret those kind of dreams because people do have um, that connection as well. And sometimes it's incredibly realistic. Like he said when he told you the dream was like it had happened in the past and so it felt different. All right, my guest is Jason DeBoard, J.M. DeBoard, dream interpreter. Okay, interpreter. Interpretator was kind of (laughs) neat. But it almost sounds like a food of some kind. Anyway, we'll be back. It's Wendy's Coffee House, KC Talk Radio. Check the blog. I've got some more headlines there. Back in a few. Wendy's Coffee House, KC Talk Radio. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time listening. We try to keep these short. When it's on the air, um, it, it... it's like real time, live time. You have the commercials and the news. But when you listen to the podcast, it's like a clean edit and um, mostly clean. OK, my producer takes out any language that might have been unsuitable for public airing. <laughs> OK, <laughs> going back, my guest, uh, Jason DeBoard, J.M. DeBoard, who is a dream interpreter. And he's got a book out and he does he does. You can take a class and learn more about how to interpret your own dreams. Plus, he can interpret them for you if you don't want to take the class and say, OK, Jason, just make this work. How did, what happened? Um, you can do that. I also wanted to throw in the fact that when I mentioned the SARS thing, not the SARS thing, we kind of di- digress, but the coronavirus, you actually can go to an interactive map. Just don't do it before you go to bed at night, okay? Because the interactive map tells you where globally this thing is active. And then you can follow along and, and don't worry about the headlines because you'll know firsthand from Johns Hopkins what's happening, where and when. How's that, Jason? See? See, we'll kind of prevent the nightmares or at least give them real data to work with. <laughs> and it's all, you know, Wendy, if you have these, you know, emotional things going through you, fears, um, health issues, the dreaming mind has a priority process that it goes through where it takes the most important things that need to be digested. And that's what it that's what it does first. Dr. Ruben Naiman at the University of Arizona is a sleep uh, medicine specialist and quite the dream expert. And he calls dreaming psychological digestion. And I like to use that in my classes and, you know, uh, my books and other ways when I go and I teach this subject to begin there because I've just given you two words to understand what is going on while you are dreaming. You are psychologically digesting everything that you've taken into yourself during the day, but you're also allowing your body to heal. You are clearing your emotional banks. Um, You are processing your memories. So whatever you've taken into yourself is going to be outputted. And, Wendy, there's no better time to remind people that garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. If you're taking in garbage during the day, then that's what you're going to get back to a certain extent in your dreams, or at least your dreams are going to reflect it. And when I say garbage, I mean what's coming into your body, what's coming into your mind, what's coming into your heart, what's coming into your spirit. Okay, so how do you fine tune that? How do you, in your, you know, with your practice, the way, how do you suggest people start being more in, intentional in their dreamscape, in their dreaming? Well, first, it's um, doing everything you can during the day to, um, to live as healthy and balanced as you can. I mean, it's general advice that applies, you know, to a, a kind of across the spectrum. But if you want to improve your dream life, that's really the place to begin. You know, I've been learning how to lucid dream, and the best piece of advice, like people go through all these mental gymnastics to try to, you know, induce lucid dreams. Right. And the best method that I found is to be lucid during the day. You're dreaming life. You're dreaming. It's a cycle. We tend to think of, you know, when the lights go out, you know, and you go to bed and you start dreaming, that it's a completely different thing. You know, it's the other side of the coin or something like it's it's very different from waking reality and consciousness. But really, these two they're 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 chasing their own tail in a way and that it's a cycle. So what's happening to you during the day is affecting how you're dreaming at night and how you're dreaming at night is affecting what's happening to you during the day. So living lucidly is the best thing that you can do to improve your dream life. And also, Wendy, this is something that it could be important for your listeners also. Have you ever asked yourself, what is the intelligence behind the dream? 
Because when you you can start getting to a point where you can treat your dreaming mind as kind of like the holodeck on Star Trek, where you can interact with it and it will respond to you in a virtual reality simulation. Mm -hmm. You can become conscious during a dream and you can look at, at the dreaming mind and you, you can talk to it directly. And you can see the wizard behind the curtain. There is a, an intelligence that is behind dreaming that I haven't found the bottom of it yet. What I mean by that is, is that you can start to realize that the, the dreaming mind, the intelligence behind it is responsive to you. And that as you find out what this intelligence is and you go deeper and deeper into it, you don't find the bottom. It's really interesting to find out the intelligence that's behind your dreams because there's no bottom to it, Wendy. It, you start to explore this thing that is creating our dreams, and you find out that it's like this virtual reality simulation, that it's responsive to you, and it's intelligent. It's aware of you, every, even more aware of you than you are of yourself in the sense of it knows more about you because a lot of your mind is unconscious, which means it's outside of your conscious awareness. But the dreaming mind has no blind spots. It sees everything that you are, including all of your potential and all of your history, and it responds to you. And it's, it's fascinating because as you keep going deeper and deeper into this thing, you don't find the bottom of it. And what you really find is, is that it expands out to start including more things that are going on than just in your own little head. You know, we, we talk about dreaming as being a process of memory consolidation and processing of emotional digestion. Um, uh, these are all very personal things, you know, internal. But when you keep going deeper and deeper into your dream life, you find that what it's doing is opening up a door so that you can get outside of yourself and expand. And you start dreaming about things like what's going on with your friends and their emotional states, even if you're not aware of it consciously, you can find out like, hey, my, um, you know, my uh, boyfriend or girlfriend from 10 years ago is now getting married. And it just you wake up and you it pops into your mind. You didn't see it on Facebook. You didn't have any other way of knowing about this. But suddenly it's just there and you have this information. And it's because there's this kind of emotional resonance between all of us where we are in a sleep state and in a dream state, we are passing information back and forth between each other subconsciously. I so it not get... only includes what's going on with friends and relatives, but also what's going on in the world. And that's what I wanted to get into with when you're having other characters come up in your dream, whether they, you know, if they're deceased or if they're famous, you know, what the significance is of other people who come to you and you know, present as a friend or as a, an adversary. You know, how, does that, how does that play in? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, dream characters are fascinating. They, it's one of my favorite courses that I created at dreamschool.net is the course on dream characters because it can, you can begin with understanding your dream characters as projections from your inner world. You can really think of a dream as your inner world projected out like a movie, and then you walk into the movie as an actor in it. Okay, dream character, you're walking in there. Hold that thought, hold that thought. we got to take a break. Okay, again, my guest is Jason DeBoard, J.M. DeBoard, dream interpreter. And we're going to find out more if we have, like, really exciting characters or if we have dull characters, if that's also a problem. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Dreaming. Loud and proud. Stars. So if you dream more about, like, you know, very recognizable, highly identifiable people, Brad Pitt might be one who's popular right now because he's had all the headlines, um, or somebody who's completely off under the radar and you wouldn't even think of maybe, I'm just thinking like radar from MASH. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, so what is, when you got those characters, how do you identify yeah. those? Um, first, uh, my dream interpretation dictionary has an entry under famous. And it explains that you a lot of people dream about famous people. I mean, mm -hmm. we are exposed to them in the media, and um, uh, so you'll you'll dream about uh, someone. Like for example, there was a guy who dreamed that um, Kanye West was his older brother, 
And there was this theme of interacting with each other and Conway's like performing his music and all this. And what we figured out from it is, is that this guy also, the dreamer, had an interest in music and in expressing himself through, you know, through lyrics and song. And so really when he's dreaming about Kanye, he's dreaming about a part of himself that relates to Kanye musically. You could dream about um, a, a president or a leader of a company or something like that, and they are representative of a side of you that has that executive quality to be able to make decisions and marshal resources and take responsibilities. Um, Wendy, I've been working on manifesting more abundance and wealth in my life, and my related dreams bring in Bill Gates. Oh, because wow. The okay. somebody in my mind that is associated with a, making a lot of money and mm -hmm. having abundance and wealth. So when you dream about um, famous people, then most often, I mean, it's like the same with any dream character. Where do you begin understanding it? Ask yourself and answer this question. What do I see about myself in them? Okay. It's not an ego trip if you dream about, you know, a famous singer and you want to be a singer or express yourself musically to look at them and see something about you in them. It doesn't mean that you're going to make gazillions of dollars or go on the next world tour with, um, you know, Shakira or someone like that. What it means is, is that you have something inside of you that wants to um, come out, you mm -hmm. know, in this case, musically. Or it could be, you know, it could take a singer and just show that as take the idea of vocal expression. And so maybe you're not a singer, but you are um, uh, uh, you're, you're producing a podcast. Let's just say you are vocally expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. So these ideas, it, it, you know, they all relate to each other. So you always ask yourself when you see someone in a dream, what do you see about yourself and them? It gets especially tricky when you dream about people that you know, because mm -hmm. the temptation is to think of the dream character as representing the person, when really what you're seeing in the form of the dream character is the internal impression that you have of that person. And since it's an internal impression, it's you that you're seeing. It's not the person per se, it's you. So you always look for yourself in your dream characters, and it gets really fascinating. Go to dreamschool.net and take my course on dream characters. I give dozens of examples of how the dream characters, you can interact with them, that you can understand them. by under, They can help you to understand yourself better because when you see them, you're really seeing something about you. What I also find interesting is that when you're de dealing with deceased, this is how I get information. Usually when someone is um, in the dream, I know that they are deceased, and it doesn't have to be a relative. But what it will stand for is a piece of information that I need. And whatever that person excelled yeah. at, if they were a presenter, if they were um, if, a farmer, if what, whatever they had, there was a piece of information that I needed, and they were there to give it to me in that yeah. way. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And when I talked earlier about there being no bottom to the dream intelligence and that when you go deep into this, you expand out and find yourself in this sort of matrix of communication going on between you and the universe, that includes all of the aspects of the universe, including the people who've passed on. Now, it's, I don't want to uh, uh, get into people's beliefs about the afterlife, but I will just say that through my experience and the experience of my dreams is, is that when you pass out of your body, you wake up in spirit, and there's a, you, you are the person that you were in life you, in a way, you, I mean, but you carry your knowledge and your awareness, your wisdom, your, your information, you carry it with you. And your work continues on the other side in the sense of if you were somebody who was, let's say, very interested in um, a branch of science like physics, well, now you're on the other side and you're carrying that information. And if I on this side or you on this side, Wendy, mm -hmm. need that information, you can tap in through your dreams to that person and that you can share they can share their information and knowledge with you. So it's going from someone who has passed out of body, we call them deceased, mm -hmm. um, but they're, it just means they're no, they're consciousness, but they're no longer in a body. Right. And you can communicate with them. 
But it gets tricky, Wendy, because you could dream about someone who is, let's say, a deceased or loved one, and the dream is entirely personal. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, a, it's an inner drama about what's going on with you as you deal with missing the person, as you deal with the loss of them, as you deal with your emotions and your grief and whatever else, like, you know, maybe anger or sadness or something like that. But when you actually connect with another living intelligence, it's different, it's different. than the ordinary dream. Yeah. Because this is, yeah, this there's is where an awareness dream, there. Dream journals. Dream journals, because then you learn, okay, this is what I tend to do when it's something that's informative and I need the information, and it's it's a, a, an external versus a personal issue I'm trying to work through. And the journal, as I go back and look at that and refresh on how it came through the first time, I'm better at interpreting and understanding what I'm, just the information I'm trying to get from the situation or the person, and that makes a world of difference because you've... It, for me, it's been 50, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. A lot of journaling. When you get this experience with, you get this experience with your dream life once you've worked with it long enough and you've kept a journal. Mm-hmm. So you can see and feel the difference between an ordinary dream and one that is bringing you information, you know, like your, uh, your tsunami dream, you know, or mm-hmm. your dream about getting this information from a person who has passed away but you experience them as a living person. And that is really, really important because when you, when you might dream about someone and let's say that they look like, you know, sick as the day that they died, that is not the spirit of your loved one, Mm -hmm. you know, or you dream about them and you are still having the same problems you did in your relationship um, as when they were alive. That is not the spirit of them. That is you and processing internally. When you actually run across you have a visitation, you can look in the eyes of that person and see the intelligence there. You can see the personality there. They don't have to make their lips move to speak to you. Mm -hmm. They can speak to you telepathically. Their messages are always positive. I mean, it may be more informative than putting an emotional, you know, like positive, negative, you know, maybe not so much positive, but it's never like there's never any guilt trips. There's never any anger. There's never sadness. There's never any of that, you know, but the way that you figure this out over time, Wendy, is just like you said, you keep a dream journal and over time you can start to see the difference. Most of your dreams are going to be the ordinary variety, but as you've probably discovered the more that you open yourself to the greater possibilities, the more that they come to you. Mm -hmm. You can keep yourself as closed off as you want to be and not have these experiences. And maybe every once in a while they'll come to you, but you can write it off, ignore it, go on with your, you know, uh, everyday reality and not accept that there's a greater reality out there that you are intimately plugged into every night in your dreams, really all the time. But if you want to have these experiences and know the greater reality and expand your awareness, you just simply start pursuing it and your dream life will respond to you and give you those experiences to continue to open you up and to continue to teach you so that you can become um, a better navigator in these uncharted waters for you. And it gets really fascinating. We're going to have to you go. Know, if we your gotta... life feels boring or humdrum, dig into your dream life. Keep a dream journal. I tell you, it'll get exciting real quick, Wendy. Okay, so reddit.com. And then your for people who want to take the class, your website real quick. I highly suggest it, dreamschool.net. There's a free introduction and seven or eight other classes that you can take. And this will dive you deep into dream interpretation and understanding the dream experience. One of the fun things I did, we had to get out of here, J.M. DeBoard and dream interpreter, uh, my cat, who was deceased. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to sell my car, and I didn't know what to do. In the dream, the cat was coming to me, and he had a blue color dye, kind of a dye on his, and he was completely white, and he had the blue color, and I thought... That means that's the color of the car seat. I need to keep the car. It'll be just fine. That's the funky way dreams work when you figure out your own code. Hey, Jason, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing, and we'll talk again. And for you who are listening, Wendy's Coffee House, the Blogspot site, I've got links, more stuff to kind of peruse and check out. And coming up, an ET experiencer who will blow your mind, John Foster. 
Thanks for listening. See ya. Ay, mija, abuelita San Hawaii, and I still need to shop for the party. No worries. Let's order through Instacart. ¿Insta qué? Sí, llama. We can order groceries and more online and get everything delivered in as fast as an hour. ¿Everything for dinner? Carne, tortillas, limas, plátanos. Claro. ¿Anything else? Just make sure the plátanos are ripe. Get groceries delivered same day with Instacart so you have more time for family. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. I'm at the football game. I'm at the grocery store. What? I'm at the combination football game and grocery store. Wait, you're at the football game what? and the grocery store? Nah. I'm at the combination football game and grocery store. Groceries through Instacart. Delivered. To my door, I don't have to choose between football and the grocery store.